Story of Prophet Yusuf a.s. Prophet Yusuf or Joseph a.s. was born around 906 BC in Jerusalem. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was the son of Prophet Yaqub a.s. from his wife Rachel. Prophet Yusuf's mother passed away during the birth of his younger brother Benjamin. After the death of his wife, Prophet Yaqub a.s. raised the little Prophet Yusuf and Benjamin without their mother, but still with a lot of love. Apparently, this triggered jealousy of the ten other sons of Prophet Yaqub a.s. One day, Prophet Yusuf a.s. dreamed that eleven stars and the sun and moon bowed down to him. He needed to dream of to his father. Prophet Yaqub a.s. realized that the dream outlined the destiny of and greatness of his son. Prophet Yaqub a.s. was a wise and old man, so he knew that his other son would not be happy to hear about Yusuf's dreams, so he asked little Prophet Yusuf not to tell his brothers about the dream. He was worried that they would be jealous of him and become his enemies. That afternoon, the ten sons of Prophet Yaqub a.s. were resting under the tree after herding cattle. From the distance, they saw Yusuf and Benjamin were playing. The two younger brothers did not get the tax of the taking care of anything because they were still small. The older son were upset and thought that the Prophet Yaqub a.s. had shown favoritism, especially to Yusuf. One of the brothers wanted to kill Prophet Yusuf, but the elder's brother did not agree. He suggested putting the Prophet Yusuf in a well so that the travelers would find him and take him away from their home. Everyone agreed to the idea. Whenever they took their goats up to graze, they would ask their father if Yusuf could come with them. Prophet Yaqub a.s. always refused, saying that the boy was too young. When Prophet Yusuf a.s. reached the age of 16, his brothers insisted that he was old enough. With a bad feeling, Prophet Yaqub a.s. allowed them to take Yusuf. The next day, his brother took Yusuf into the woods. They were overjoyed that they could finally get rid of Yusuf. They walked through the woods and went straight to the well. Just as they had planned, they bent down at the edge of the well under the pretext of drinking water. Together, they undressed Yusuf and picked him up and threw him into a well. Prophet Yusuf a.s. cried out for help and he pleaded with his brothers to save him. But his brothers would not heed Yusuf's cry and left him at the well. On the way back, they slaughtered a goat and smeared the Prophet's shirt with blood. They arrived home, pretended to be crying and told their father that a wolf came and ate Yusuf. Prophet Yaqub a.s. did not believe them and could do nothing but be patient and ask for all those help. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was terrified to be in the dark well by himself. He wondered why his brothers would do something like this to him. Soon a group of merchants traveling of Egypt passed by the well and rested the well replenishing their water supply. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was overjoyed when he saw a bucket descend into the well and quickly grabbed it. When the slave who was fetching the water began to carry it, he felt that the load was very heavy, so he peered into the well. He was surprised to see a young man holding on to a rope. The slave held the rope tightly and shouted to his friend to help him. They were surprised to see a handsome young man and intended to sell Yusuf in a slave market. After a few days of traveling through the desert, they arrived at a small town in Egypt that was part of territory of Ryan bin Walid, king of Hexus. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was taken to the slave market. Allah had arranged everything. On that day, the chief minister of Egypt named Al-Aziz was walking in the slave market. When he saw the Prophet Yusuf a.s., he immediately wanted to buy him. Al-Aziz bought him for only a few silver coins. When they reached the palace, pro the Prophet was shocked when the chief minister ordered his men to remove his chain. Make him feel comfortable here, Al-Aziz told his wife. Prophet Yusuf a.s. thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that now he had a shelter and he was well taken care of. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was appointed personal attendant to Prime Minister's wife. 
His obedience won the heart of everyone. Prophet Yusuf a.s. good looks also become the talk of the town. His face attracted many women including Zulaiha, the wife of the minister al-Aziz. Zulaiha's admiration for Prophet Yusuf a.s. turned into love, and she could not control her desire. One day, Zulaiha tried to kiss Prophet Yusuf, but he refused because he was a devout worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then walked away from Zulaiha and went to the door. Zulaiha ran after him and grabbed him by the shirt. When Zulaiha pulled it, she accidentally tore the Prophet Yusuf's shirt with the torn shirt in Zulaiha's hand. At the same time, the door suddenly opened. There stood her husband and another relative. Surprised to see her fa- husband, Zulaiha immediately pretended that she was being seduced by Prophet Yusuf a.s. and she said, You should impress on him now because he has dared to tempt me. The Prophet immediately denied the accusation. It was she who seduced me and tried to pull me, said Prophet Yusuf a.s. Al-Aziz was a fair man. He was still unsure who to trust. So he asked his wife cousin for advice. If his shirt is torn from the front, then he, Yusuf, has told the truth, and she, referred to Zulaika, is among those who lie, advised his cousin. Thus, Yusuf's innocence was proven. Al-Aziz apologized for his wife's indecency and asked Yusuf to swear to secrecy. News of the incident spread in the city. The other woman began to taunt her. Feeling depressed, Zulaiha planned to prove to everyone that they would be helpless in the face of Yusuf's overwhelming good look. Therefore, Zulaiha invited the woman to a banquet at her residence. Then, there she served fruit and with knife. While the women were chatting and slicing fruit, Zulaiha called Prophet Yusuf a.s. The women were so amazed at the handsomeness of Prophet Yusuf, they sliced their hand unconsciously as if without pain. Zulaiha seized the moment to announce that this was the man to blame. She then warned Yusuf that if he denied her again, he will be imprisoned. Prophet Yusuf a.s. replied, I would rather go to prison than commit a sinful act. That night, Zulaiha convinced her husband that the only way to preserve her honor and prestige was to imprison Prophet Yusuf a.s. The chief minister loved the prophet like a son and he knew that he was innocent. He had never met another man who was so loyal to him. It was with a heavy heart that Al-Aziz ordered Prophet Yusuf a.s. to be arrested and imprisoned. It was not an easy decision for him to put an innocent man behind the bars. However, he was left with no choice. That day, the Prophet was chained and put inside the prison. The people in prison knew that Prophet Yusuf a.s. was a noble young man with great knowledge and compassionate heart. The Prophet was blessed by Allah with the ability to interpret dreams. At about the same time, two other men entered the prison. The first was the king's cupbearer named Nabuwa, and the second young man was in charge of serving the king's bread named Majilat. That night, the two new prisoners had a string dream. Nabuwa saw grapes that were still attached to the twigs and leaves. Then he took and squeezed the grape to serve the king. Majilat dreamed that he was carrying three loaves of bread on his head and a group of birds were eating them. When they woke up, they told their dreams to Prophet Yusuf a.s. On hearing this, the Prophet first invited them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then told them the meaning of the dream. Majilat's dream meant that the baker would be cr- crucified until he died. Nabuwa's dream meant that he would soon be released and he would return to serve the king. Soon, all the interpretation of the dream told by Prophet Yusuf came true. Nabuwa went back to work serving the king, and Prophet Yusuf remained in prison for several years until he was 30 years old. One night, the king had a strange dream. He saw that he was standing on the bank of the Nile and saw that the water was receding, and saw fish jumping in the dry mud. Then he saw seven fat cows appear followed by seven skinny cows that immediately swallowed the fat cows. The king woke up frightened and soon fell back asleep. In his sleep, he then saw seven green wheat grain growing on the riverbank. 
Suddenly the seven wheat kernel disappear, and in their place appear seven dry wheat kernels. The king woke up and became even more distressed, as he could not understand the meaning of his dream. The next day he called his minister, priest, and advisor to tell them his dream, but they were confused and did not know the meaning of the king's dream. They gave excuses and said that it was just a bad dream and there was nothing to worry about. The king was disappointed with the opinion of his ministers. He was convinced that his dream was premonition. At the time, Nabua was serving the king and remembered the Prophet Yusuf a.s. Nabua told the king about Prophet Yusuf a.s. who could interpret dreams. Then the king sent him to meet the Prophet. Nabua told Prophet Yusuf about the king's dream. The Prophet prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then explained the meaning of the dream. Prophet Yusuf a.s. said, There will be seven years of bountiful harvest in the kingdom. If the land is cultivated well, then there will be a good harvest, and the people will have more than enough food. This will be followed by seven years of drought in the kingdom. The people will not have enough food, and there will be food scarcity throughout Egypt. When the cupbearer told the king about the interpretation, the king was amazed. He commanded Prophet Yusuf a.s. to be released and brought before him. When the king's messengers arrived at the prison to release him, Prophet Yusuf a.s. refused to leave prison until he was proven innocent. The messenger returned to the king and delivered the words of Prophet Yusuf. The king realized that the prophet had been unjustly imprisoned, so he immediately ordered an investigation. King Rayyan ibn Walid, Samud, Julaiha, and the wives of other ministers who attended the lavish banquet to the palace. The king asked them about the Prophet Yusuf a.s. All these women give statement that Prophet Yusuf was innocent. He was in prison because of Julaiha's action. Hearing this confession, Prophet Yusuf was released from the prison. When Prophet Yusuf was brought to the palace, the king was stunned by this handsome young man. After seven bountiful years, drought began to hit the country. The water of the Nile River began to recede. The ground cracked. Not a single drop of water descended from the sky. The green harvest failed, and many farm animals starved to death. At that time, the surplus in the granary was rationed to meet the needs of the people. The Egyptian people were still well off, even though the long drought. With Allah's help, Prophet Yusuf a.s. was able to save the Egyptian people from disaster. The king increasingly believed in Prophet Yusuf a.s. The king decided to help the people around the drought-stricken country. The king ordered the evenly distributed grain to those in need. This famine also affected Canaan. Prophet Yaqub a.s. heard news about grain being distributed in Egypt. He decided to send all his children except Benjamin to Egypt to get grain. The brothers traveled for many days and finally arrived in Egypt. Prophet Yusuf a.s. heard about ten brothers who came from a distant land. When they arrived to gather grain, the Prophet immediately recognized them, but the brothers did not. They thought their brother Yusuf had died a long time ago. The Prophet then met them and welcomed them warmly. After giving them profession, he asked where they had come from. We are eleven brothers, son of a Nobel Prophet, but our youngest brother is at home tending to our father's need. We came from Canaan, they replied. On hearing this, he cried, longing to meet his father and his little brother. Are you telling the truth? Prophet Yusuf asked. The brothers were confused. What do we have to lie to you? Prophet Yusuf said. If what you say is the truth, then bring your youngest brother and I will double your ration. Prophet Yusuf a.s. asked his servant to hide the money the brothers had paid in one the sack of the wheat. After a few days of travel, they reached Canaan. They greeted their father and said that they would be given more grain if they brought Benjamin. But Prophet Yaqub a.s. said sadly, I will never allow Benjamin to travel with you. How can I trust you knowing what you did to Yusuf? One of Prophet's sons opened a sack of wheat and was shocked when he found a purse of money in the bag. Look, Dad, 
the noble official has refunded our money. This is proof that they will not hurt our brother. But Prophet Yaqub still refused. After a few months, they ran out of grain. Prophet Yaqub a.s. asked them to travel to Egypt again. We can't go there without Benjamin, said one of the brothers. Prophet Yaqub a.s. was forced to agree to bring Benjamin to Egypt on condition that they should swear to bring him back safely. When they arrived in Egypt, Prophet Yusuf a.s. welcomed them wholeheartedly. When the Prophet and Benjamin were alone in the room, Prophet Yusuf a.s. told Benjamin that he was his brother who had been lost many years ago. Benjamin burst into excitement when he heard this. Prophet Yusuf asked Benjamin to keep it a secret, and Benjamin agreed, and he hugged the Prophet tightly. They cried and shed tears of joy. The next day, while his brothers were loading bags of wheat, the Prophet ordered his servant to hide a golden cup in Benjamin's salter bag. As the eleven brothers prepared for their journey home, soldiers came running toward them and shouted, Stop right there, you thieves! The people around heard this gathered. The royal soldier began to search their bag one by one and found a golden cup from Benjamin's bag. All the brothers were astonished. The soldier took Benjamin into the palace. They began to beg the prophet for mercy. Oh, minister, take one of us instead. But Prophet Yusuf a.s. refused. The prophet did this because he wanted Benjamin to stay with him in the kingdom. Judah, the oldest brother, was very worried about his oath to Prophet Yaqub a.s. to bring Benjamin home, and he told the others, I will stay here, and I will not leave this land until my father permits me, or until Benjamin is freed. The other brothers left enough provision for Judah, who stayed in the tavern, awaiting the fate of Benjamin. After days of traveling, the son of the Prophet Yaqub a.s. reached their home. They explained what had happened. The elderly Prophet Yaqub a.s. was very sad and considered this all a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Yaqub a.s. asked his sons not to despair and return to Egypt. When they arrived in Egypt, they picked up Judah and went together to Prophet Yusuf a.s. to beg him to let Benjamin go. Prophet Yusuf a.s. felt sorry for his brother. He began to reveal his true identity by saying, What evil have you done to Yusuf? The ten brothers were dumbfounded. They wondered why the Egyptian minister knew what they had done to Yusuf all those years ago. They knew that this was a secret known only to themselves and Yusuf. Are you my brother, Yusuf? They asked him. Yes, I am Yusuf, and Benjamin is my brother, he replied. Prophet Yusuf a.s. took off his crown. His ten brothers bowed down and apologized to him. Prophet Yusuf a.s. said, I will not punish you. May Allah forgive you too. Prophet Yusuf then embraced his brothers and wept with joy. It was impossible for him to leave Egypt as he had so many responsibilities. So, he advised his brothers to go without him. Prophet Yusuf a.s. said, Go home and take my clothes and wrap them on my father's eyes. God willing, with Allah's permission, father will be able to see again and bring all the family members to move here. The ten brothers returned to Egypt to fulfill Prophet Yusuf's request. With Allah's permission, Prophet Yaqub a.s. was able to see again. Then together they headed to Egypt to reunite with their long lost son. Prophet Yusuf a.s. was so happy to see Prophet Yaqub and Quraysh arrive at the palace. Prophet Yusuf a.s. asked permission from the king that all his family would move and settle in Egypt. The king was happy with Prophet Yusuf's decision. The family of Prophet Yusuf a.s. bowed down to him. Prophet Yusuf a.s. raised his father upon the throne and said, Oh my father, this is the explanation of my vision of before. My Lord has made it a reality, and He was certainly good to me when He took me out of the prison and brought you here. From Bedouin life after Satan has induced a stretchment between me and my brothers. Indeed, my Lord is subtle in what He wills. Indeed, it is He who is the knowing and the wise. Thus Allah reunite Father and Son.
As the years passed, Prophet Yusuf a.s. continued to carry out his duty in the kingdom while preaching. According to scholars, Prophet Yusuf eventually married Zulaiha and had two sons, Ibrahim and Manasseh. Before he died, Prophet Yusuf a.s. advised his sons to adhere to the teaching of Islam and advised his brother to bury him next to the graves of his ancestor. Prophet Yusuf a.s. died at age of 110. He was mummified and placed in a coffin until he could be taken out of Egypt and buried next to his ancestor in Hebron, Palestine. <laughs>